Hello everyone and welcome to the Inquisitor Friend with Shaw, your host. This is a podcast that brings you interviews and insights from all walks of life on the reality of being. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I welcome Bola Abinbola. And Bola is an energy practitioner, a channel, and an emotional mastery expert. Bola runs Soul Space Healing Practice in London, and she's an official host of Adyashanti Meditation Gatherings. Bola has been doing this work for many years, and she's a Reiki practitioner, so she does energy healing. And I'm really pleased to have her on the show because... It's all topics I'm interested in, things that I do. I do energy healing as well. So it's always nice to speak to like-minded guests. We talk a bit more about, I suppose, how we can live daily as well, which leads us into her book, Daily Soul Bites for an Inspired Life, which is now on Amazon. Ola is very passionate about her work. And she talks a lot about self-awareness and self-healing because it all does come down to the self. It's okay to be able to help other people, but you also have to be in a space being able to help other people. It's something that we, we share that ideal, an idea about whatever you emit transmutes. So whatever you give out will somehow show up within the universe through either it be through other people, through your work, uh, through the words you say, through a look, through a touch, whatever it may be, it will come out in some form. And it is a joy and pleasure as well to speak to her about the law of attraction, because I know that this has been spoken about so many times in different ways, and people either believe it or they don't, but there is a science behind it. And it's not what people think. People often think it's just think of things and they appear. Well, that can happen. I've certainly had that happen in my life. It doesn't matter what religion or school of thought or uh, spirituality you believe in, you practice. There are scientific laws and there are spiritual laws which coincide. And the law of polarity is one. We all have belief systems, but some things have been proven to be true. And so one of the reasons why I like doing this podcast is to gather different views from people. This podcast is championing people who are looking and seeking, doing the work, um, seeking understanding, integration in life. Paul and I speak about energy healing. She uses Reiki. So in many ways, we're all working towards that space of showing up much better in the world. And I believe one of the ways that we can become better, become more loving, more helpful, more understanding, is to start to tap into ourselves and feel. And if we can start to feel a bit more about what we're doing, what we're feeling, what we are emitting, then we can begin to feel that with other people. People talk about karma. That's the law of attraction. So I'm very pleased uh, to have Bola on the show. She's such a beautiful energy and just doing some great work out there. And she supports Scope, which is a charity, and it, it promotes disability awareness and equality which is wonderful many of you have seen those scope charity shops on the high street so uh that is that charity scope it's a wonderful charity and you can support them in any way by visiting one of the charity shops or by supporting them online or attending some of their events as well of course there are other charities but this is the one that is very close to bola's heart and she will tell you why so Let's welcome Bola to the show. Thank so Bola, you. thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you on. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me, Sha. <laughs> thank you. So let's talk about your work. There's several areas that you work in, and I want to break it down for our listeners, our viewers. 
exactly what you do. So let's start with the energy work. So you're an energy person, you're an energy practitioner, you call yourself. What does yeah. that mean? What What does an energy practitioner do? Yes, I was, um, I was very curious about it myself for a long time. <laughs> You know, I I used to hear about it. My brother was um was always into Reiki energy practice, and I have a son. I'm a mother of a son. He's 27 now, and he has very complex health needs. And um, I was trying so many different things for him, trying medication, you know, therapy, and he was making some progress, but not enough. He wasn't sleeping well at night. And my brother kept saying to me, try Reiki energy healing. And I kept saying, no, no, I just want to go with what is traditional, what is known, what is proven. And then one day I was so desperate and I said to him, give me the contact of your practitioner. And she didn't even have to come to the house. She could just send Reiki from afar. And that was the first time he slept through the night. And it took me another 10 years, actually, to actually even train up to be um, a Reiki practitioner, but it was my son and my family who led me into Reiki and energy healing. Now, I came to find out that we actually are energy beings. We have 50 trillion cells in our bodies and each cell has 0.7 volts. So we are actually beings that have 3.5 trillion volts in our bodies. And this energy is called different things in different cultures and in you know, countries. So in the West, you know, you could have it, you know, called, you know, Holy Spirit, or in the East, it could be the Chi, or it could be Prana. And I came to find out that this Prana, this Chi, is actually our true self. This energy is infinite intelligence. And it actually governs everything within us. But we are disconnected from it. We do not know that this is our true self. We walk around in our conditioned physical ego beings. And there's so much density that we're containing with. And it comes, it comes to be that we feel very separate from our true self. It takes time for us to learn to really walk in this true self. And this is what Reiki energy healing does. It allows us to align, to become familiar with that true infinite intelligence that is already within us. And this is what I learned to do. This is what I support my clients to do. It's really about coming to understand that there are energy, neural energy um, circuits within us that actually carry an infinite intelligence of their own. And the brain, we now know the brain is neuroplastic. So it's constantly changing, it's constantly growing. The neural networks are constantly expanding. So nothing is fixed. And it's this infinite intelligence that works through the neural circuits that allows us to become much more aligned to our true self. So my clients over time, when they receive the energy healing, they find themselves being able to observe more and judge less. They're just judging people less. They're finding themselves being able to set boundaries and hold less resentments. So when something happens, you're finding yourself not really getting angry, but just saying, okay, so this is what I need to change about myself or about this particular experience. I don't need to be fearful. I can have faith. And there are things that begin to happen within us that we find easier and easier to do. So that is what my practice does. Energy healing is really about becoming more familiar and more, much more aligned to that infinite intelligence within us that allows us to become much more, um, um, you know, we just are able to operate as our true selves in our day to day. So there's science in Reiki and there are a number of people that say, oh, it's not science. It is about this volts within us, this energy within us. And I came to be, you know, to really come to trust it. I remember when I did my Reiki training and I felt that energy within me for the first time. And my teacher said to me, that 
that energy you feel is your true self. Become more aligned to it. But continue to practice with it. And you will see how it will transform your life. Transform how you communicate, how you connect with people, how you take care of yourself, how you deal with all the flavors of life as it comes, you know. And this is what I, I loved about it. It makes it much, much easier for us to transform. And I combined Reiki with emotional mastery, emotional freedom training, which is which is sort of the part of my work. And I, I created the SMIT Emotional Mastery System. The SMIT stands for, you know, it's S-M-I-T-T. -T. So S stands for self-awareness. M is mindfulness. I is integration. T is trauma care and self-care. And the T is transmutation, which is really the energy healing aspect, with, with, which is where we're really becoming much more familiar with that infinite intelligence within us. So, you know, that, you know, the, the, the SMIT program allows me to support my clients to move from anxiety and become much more fearless and much more aligned with emotional freedom. That is so what why mind. you've explained it so well. Um, and just as you speak about it, there's an energy to that. That's very calming, very healing. Um, okay, so what is a channel then? What because I can I know some of our listeners will be saying, well, is that a medium? Is it a psychic? Because they channel. So your definition, how are you a channel? Thank you, Shar. I think that's a really good question. We all channel. See that infinite intelligence within us. When we allow that infinite intelligence to drive our day to day, whatever we do, we are channeling. We are channeling that infinite intelligence. And when we are doing something we love, something we're passionate about, something that the ego has been set aside, all the conditionings, all the beliefs, all the doubts, we feel so strongly about it. Those moments we are channeling, channeling is really about connecting to that infinite intelligence. And infinite intelligence is contained at, at, at an intergalactic level. I also channel intergalactic beings, especially the sixth dimension on our Dorians. And this is something that came to me. I've been doing it for, you know, for over 20 years, but I did not know exactly the name of the people I was channeling or the beings I was channeling. But as I began to work with a number of spiritual teachers, the same names came to me, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, and also the Aldorians, six dimensional Aldorians. And really, we come to see that it's all about love. There are different parts of us that begin to get healed, the inner child. There is so much trauma that we have in our childhood that we really become quite stuck in if we do not get help and beginning to connect with the channels that we have. Channels could come from anywhere in this intergalactic system. We all know about the solar systems. The universe is much bigger than that. We have multi-universes. And what I've come to learn is really opening myself up to infinite intelligence. That alone, that alone, just being willing being willing to align, being willing to surrender the doubts, the fears of doing something that is not kind of conforming to the norm. We can open ourselves up to actually experience a lot more of that infinite intelligence, which is really intergalactic. So I believe we're all channels, but we come to understand who we're channeling and we come to feel more supported, more loved. And it's a really interesting journey. It's a journey. You know, first we we are conditioned in that ego self. And I learned through a book my mom had it on the shelf when I was 18. My mom was a librarian and she had all kinds of books from all over the world, you see. And I looked on the shelf one day at home. We had a bookshelf in every room. And there was a book on the shelf that was titled, Who Am I? by Ramana Maharashi. I did not know who he was at the time, 
But later on, I got to find out that this book, which was talking about the higher self and the lower self, this is the ego self, sowed a seed in me. And I began to become very inquisitive about this higher self. And that is how I began to slowly align myself to this infinite intelligence. It started way back when I was 18, but it took me many, many years after that. <laughs> it was only in 2016 that I got my Reiki training that I felt what it was. I actually felt it within me. And that was, um, that I've never looked back since then. I mean, I knew my son was receiving Reiki. He was, you know, he was receiving Reiki from this channel that, you know, from this Reiki practitioner. But um, I did not know what it was. I did not feel it. I did not have an experience of it. But when we practice Reiki, when we receive Reiki, we feel that energy, that soothing calm within us. And now it's a part of my breath. It's a part of me. It's a part of me when I talk. It's a part of me when I do anything. It just, it follows me from when I wake up to when I go to bed. It's it's a part. That that becomes our essence of being. This is what um, channeling does. We, we actually become who we are channeling. We become that infinite intelligence. We are learning more and more and we're leaving the physical ego behind. It's always there but it's driven by the infinite intelligence, driven less by the beliefs of the world and driven more by the loving, unconditionally loving beliefs of the um, infinite intelligence self. Wonderful. And yes, let's go back just a little bit because you mentioned a few really important things there about growing up and what surrounded you there were there was books in every room and you you know <laughs> and you know you had a parent and maybe both were into books and yes. but, you know whoever you're around so in childhood were you aware of being sensitive attracting things or being able to feel things pick up on emotions were you aware of that yes yes I I started as a child. I started from the age of two. I couldn't talk. And I was full with anxiety. You know, I um I knew I couldn't get the words out. And the more I tried to force it, the more anxious I became, the more fearful I became. And luckily for me, well, it wasn't lucky, it was synchronicity. Because life is about synchronicity. Nothing is a coincidence. My father was a barrister. He died when I was 11. You know, when I say past, because his, his spirit is still with us. And he certainly helped me to learn not to stutter by learning to breathe, just to breathe, to stay calm. So my journey into calm began much, much early on from the very, very beginning. I had to breathe three, four times before I said a word, one word. And my family, you know, this is my brother still stammer, you know, we still stutter. And I still stutter sometimes, you know, it's something that we have learned to live with. But I no longer have that anxiety because it's all about perspective. And it's all about the being that I'm aligning, aligning myself to be. So, yes, from the very early age I had, I didn't even know what it was called, but I was scared at all times, anytime in public. Anytime I'm in public, I knew that I couldn't talk. Um, and my father would say to me, you must put your hand up and speak. And before you speak, you must breathe. So anxiety is something that I was born with. And so I know that my teaching others how to live with anxiety is not a coincidence. Because I had a childhood where, because I was a stutterer, I suffered bullying. You know, I had a lot of... Um, unpleasant experiences, childhood sexual abuse, that did not really leave me with much self-worth. You know, you come away feeling you are, you know, helpless, you're hopeless, and you really cannot um, make any success in your life. So it was, it was really a, a struggle for me to continue to have friends, to be social, um, even though I was an A student, I was getting lots of, um, I was head girl, I was, um, and I, you know, people wonder, how can you be head girl when you stutter? 
because I had parents who continued to push me. And I think this is this is why the environment we live in, we're born into, makes a big difference. My father was a barrister, my mother was a librarian. They were determined that they would support me to feel confident, to gain that confidence. But you see, I was faking it for a long time. It took me a long time to actually really embody that true self-worth by, by aligning to infinite intelligence. But yes, anxiety is something that I, I was born into. I was born with that in, you know, speech impairment that led me to really focus. The synchronicity in that is that because I had that impairment, I focused on how I felt. I had to go within. I had parents who were saying to me, wherever you are, if there's anybody asking, do you have any questions? You must put your hand up. And in order to do that, I had to focus on learning to deal with that anxiety. So well into my 30s and 40s, I was still faking it to make it. But later on, I began to realize that I needed to dig deeper into the Eastern religions. I needed to dig deeper into quantum science. And yes, I studied psychology. My degree in psychology helped me to understand cognitive psychology therapy. And this is something that I, I came to realize that the thoughts that I hold the thoughts that we hold, the beliefs that we hold, determine the reality that we see. So all of that really helped me to begin to experience a different sense of being. And then came Reiki, where I actually felt that infinite intelligence. And that healed a lot of my inner trauma. Mm -hmm. And then I created the Smith Emotional Mastery System, which combined everything that I've learned and showed me the essence of self-awareness. Self-awareness is an understanding of our thoughts, our beliefs, our sensations, our feelings, so that we can begin to be mindful of what we prefer and what we don't, which thoughts we prefer, which feelings we prefer, and then we can align ourselves with mindfulness, with care, with integration, because integration is about really learning to hold all the different polarities within us. These are the things I have learned. You can hold fear and love. You can feel fear in, at nine o'clock and feel love at six o'clock. You, know? you, can, you can feel um, happy and, um, and sad. These polarities can exist within us because we can understand that it's not about really these feelings disappearing. It's about them being acknowledged. And then we can let them go. And right. letting go is a process. It's a, it, you know, it takes time for us to feel confident. Confident in who? Mm. Infinite intelligence. It's the infinite intelligence that we come to feel confident in. Yes. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now... Back to the show. And you that's the law of polarity, isn't it? I wonder if that can lead us into the law of attraction, because I know that's something you believe in. And a lot of people ask about that. They, they're saying, well, how can I believe this if it's not there? And my take on that is both can be true. Maybe something's not there yet, but you can still think it into it being, you know, you mm. can do both at the same time kind of thing. So mm. that's, I always bring up the law of polarity and how you can have both happening. So what's your take? Talk us through the law of attraction, because I know it's something you are very good at. You know about <laughs> it all. So I help us all understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question, Sha. Um, I see, I believe in parallel universes. I believe that whatever is on our minds, whatever we can conjure in our mind as a thought is possible, already exists. And the degree to which we can let go of the doubt that it doesn't exist, because there's so many parts of us, you know, there's so many parts of us and each part of us has different thoughts different beliefs and our beliefs are really our repeated thoughts 
And each part of us may share that thought to different degrees. The more we can come to a place where we, can, we, we, we have that thought as a dominant, dominant belief across all our being, across all our parts, the easier it is for us to attract that particular reality into our lives. And by attract, I mean we're jumping. We're jumping into that timeline. Because some of sometimes we think, oh, is there a timeline where I'm earning a million pounds or a million dollars a year? It exists. But the degree to which we can be in that timeline is really dependent on the degree to which we heal, the degree to which we release the limiting beliefs, the degree to which we come to own our self-worth. Self-worth is key. Self-worth allows us to live our dreams without, with audacity, with audacity. The law of attraction requires audacity, you know, because we are asking ourselves to create something from nothing. We're asking ourselves to have faith. And even a little faith can be hard if you're stuck in that place of disbelief, place of fear. The media is carrying, you know, lo lots of misbehavior in the media, I have to say, <laughs> where there is absolutely no room for high self-worth. There is no room for wholesomeness. There is no room for the different parts of us to feel welcome. Because you must be this way. You must be tall. You must be um, you must wear lipstick, you must wear this. And this is about us really accepting ourselves for who we truly are, the diversity of being. And from this place, from this place, we are able to step into whatever and attract whatever we actually desire as unique pieces of infinite intelligence unique pieces each of us is so unique eight billion of us each of us is a unique piece and the law of attraction really is about becoming more mindful of what you prefer what your uniqueness is what is unique about us and accepting that 100 percent from this place of acceptance we step into that vortex and this is what abraham hicks talks about all the time it's that vortex of attraction that brings forth that dimension, that timeline, that reality that we have called for. And it can happen in an instant. It can, in, 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 we can be journeying for months or years, letting go, healing, integrating. And just when we hit that vortex, we step into that timeline. And from then onwards, there is some integration to do continuously because law of attraction is about levels different levels. So you attract 5 million, then you attract 10 million, then you attract, because sometimes you want to attract 10 million, but our beliefs do not allow us to attract 10 million. So we have to start with 1 million or 5,000 pounds or $5,000 or $500. So we have to start with the level where we have absolutely no doubt. Absolutely. And that may be a level that we take time to become more aware of. Mm -hmm. So the law of attraction is how life works. It's 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 just how life works intrinsically. That's what I came to learn. <laughs> yes, I like that take. You know, a lot of people do wonder about that because their circumstances, where they've been born into, and a lot of spiritual teachers talk about the fact that you've created your life. This is what you've created. And I often get asked in workshops and things, well, you know, I was born into this or that. How did I create it? You know, so it's as you, yes, you, you, well, some people believe that you chose your parents, you chose all of that, depending on your beliefs. And I'm not saying one or the other out there, viewers, listeners, you will all have your own belief systems around that. But I suppose what you're talking about is integration as well. How can we take where we are, what we are, what we have? And if we want to consider transmutation, you know, changing life, um, elevating or settling, whatever you decide, 
then perhaps you've got to accept and look at where you are now and maybe look at where you want to go or what you want to have. And as you said, once that becomes a dominant thought, like I do want this, and I've certainly had it happen for myself, I've thought so strongly about something, the next day it appears. It just now that yeah. can work for your good or for your challenge as well. Yes. Negative if you focus too much yeah. on the negative, that can appear yes. as well. Yes. I believe. I yes. Believe. We'll go into trauma as well, because I know it's something you talk about trauma recovery. And you mentioned, you know, sometimes people's childhoods can be difficult. Um, I will say as a therapist, not everybody's childhood was difficult. I I've seen and met a lot of people where they had very comfortable very loving families and people may say well why were they in therapy well as you get older marriages happen uh changes of careers sometimes you need to work through while you're doing something doesn't mean anything bad happened in childhood how can people look to recovering from uh any trauma because I know there's a lot out there about how to deal with trauma. Yes, Um, yes. What is your take on that? I think trauma recovery is in levels. It occurs in levels, um, you know, and it starts from self-awareness. You know, that being aware, being aware, as you said, did I really suffer trauma or not? You know, and trauma does exist in, you know, there are different traumatic events that exist in our adult life. Um, And then we have to begin to, we have to desire recovery. Recovery has to be desired. Um, And not everybody desires it. And when I say desire it, it's not just spoke, you know, to, to say, I want to recover. It requires commitment and dedication because there is a programming, a rewiring that has to take place in the brain, in the heart, in the gut. And those three brains, we have the, 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 you know, the head brain, we have the heart brain and the gut brain. Recovery has to occur at the three levels. And that takes time. First of all, it's the mind, being self-aware of thoughts and the beliefs in the mind. Um, that is about mindfulness. Mm. Self-awareness of the thoughts and the beliefs in the mind, self-awareness of the pain, the heartbreak, the connections that did not serve us, you know, that we went into voluntarily, coming to understand the meanings behind these connections that filled us, coming to learn the lessons and the gut self-awareness of feeling safe. At the end of the day, we have to feel safe. Whatever decisions we're making, we're making it from a place of safety. If we're not going after the jobs we want, the money we want, the relationship we want, it's because we don't feel safe enough. And the more we are ascending that level of safety in our gut, this is the last place we heal at, we recover at, the gut. And that's what my my program does. It takes my clients through that head space from the self-awareness of the head to the heart to the gut. And it's in, it's it, it, it occurs in levels. And it takes some people eight weeks, it takes some people eight months, and it takes some people years. But it's about how much we desire it. Because we are the, it starts with us. We are the only ones. I mean, we can provide guides. We you know, we we are there as a guide. We are there as, you know, giving insights. We're there to support. Um, you know, I'm a healer, I'm a teacher, and I love what I do, but I know that we are the only ones who can truly heal ourselves when we go within and align ourselves to that infinite being that helps us when we wake up in the morning to when we go to bed. So trauma recovery is in levels, different stages. But it starts with self-awareness, being able to really become self-aware, to take action when we are guided, to take action on changing our habits, to think differently, small steps, taking action in small guided steps. So, for instance, you are used to um, 
you know, whenever a bill comes in to not open the letters because you, you, you know, you know that your parents had issues with money or you've always had issues with money or you had, you suffered some financial abuse or you have a kind of a funny relationship with money. It's about understanding that abundance is a frequency of energy and that that frequency is within you. And it's about connecting to that frequency, taking small actions every day, maybe through meditation, maybe through changing your beliefs, through, you know, reading certain books that will allow us to really connect with the energy of abundance. So we're opening that letter. We know we feel a bit of fair, but we know that at every step of the way, we are doing what we can from where we are and holding that feeling of fair with the feeling of love, feeling of support, because both, even though we have fear, we come to realize that support and love also exist within us. That polarity, being able to hold fear and tap into, become more familiar with that energy of love as well, as well. And it grows. The brain is neuroplastic. The heart, every cell of, of our body is neuroplastic. We will begin to rewire as we connect more and more, more and more with that. And it takes practice more and more with that energy of infinite intelligence, energy of love, self-awareness, taking, you know, taking guided action and being determined. Because it's not, it's, you know, it's not easy. Transmutation is, is, um, is you know that's why some I always say it's you know not everybody is, has come onto the earth plane to transmute. Mm -hmm. Some of us have actually come onto the earth plane to um, really experience that shadow self, um, and that is okay. If that is the, I I haven't I have definitely come for transmutation as high as it goes. <laughs> Wonderful! It sounds fantastic, but you know. I, I want to talk about your book uh, because you're an author and Daily Soul Bites. Tell us a bit about your book. Yeah, thank you, Shah. Um, Daily Soul Bites I wrote in 2020 because I was um, in this place where I suddenly discovered I was in some kind of apocalypse. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do with it. And um, I began to write about different perspectives on heartbreak on opportunities, on love, my thoughts on how these things really bring us into a place of separation or alignment. And it's about perspectives. It's meant to create a, a template for people to change their perspectives on different things, but first to be aware of their own perspective, just by reading mine. By reading my perspective, if they really engage with this book, they will become aware of their own perspective. Do I align? Do I not align? Because I'm very open and honest in this book. And if people engage with, and it's for any age group, it's from age 18, from, you know, as long as you're an adult, and you are able to contemplate and reflect, there is a lot of information that I've shared, over 31 nuggets, 31 insights to raise self-awareness and self-acceptance. Different parts of us are triggered and we come to really accept whatever part, that polarity, the things I'm talking about, the polarity, the, you know, the self-awareness, the self-love. This Daily Soul Bites for an Inspired Life is about increasing our knowledge of self, understanding of self, discovering parts of ourselves that we had either forgotten or we had left behind or we, or we feel or we have or parts of us that feel overwhelmed. I really am excited about this book. It just got released by Balboa Press, the paperback just got released by Barbara President of A House last week. 
That's funny. So, I, <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. And I've also got my Dilly Soul Vice um, show coming up next week, which I'm really excited about as well, which is going to be interviewing experts, coaches, authors and entrepreneurs who will be sharing insights and, and strategies on different aspects of life. So, yes, the Daily Soul Bites book is my very first book. Uh, and it's, you know, it's now been published by Barbara Press, a division of A House. That is a huge accomplishment. So congratulations for that. That's brilliant. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I, I wonder what prompted you to write, to put it all in a book. How did that come about? I come from a family of writers. Mm -hmm. I was the last to write. <laughs> my mother had written three books. My brothers had written books. My the my younger brother has written six books. The 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 the, the last brother, my last brother, has written four books. So I was i had not written any. So what prompted me to write was my goodness, I was late. <laughs> wow, that sounds like sibling. <laughs> so my mother had been saying to me, you know, when are you going to write? But I, they, they had they had all written books, but none of them, they, they were all self-published. And they hadn't been published by by publishers. And they hadn't, you know, it, 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 you know, they were sitting on the shelves. And I said to myself, when I write a book, I want it to be known. I will go to a, a publisher and I would want the publisher to support me to to get this book to everybody who I feel needs to you know who connects with it who who know who you know why have I written this book there is a reason why this book is you know because it was channeled mm -hmm. so why was it channeled and who was it meant for so I I took my time <laughs> wonderful but that's and a I, of attraction as well yes yes mm -hmm. yes I was um and how did I, you know, it was just, you're guided. You see, life, when you are connected with infinite intelligence, you suddenly, you get a phone call. And, um, you know, I I was directed to Balboa Press and in one phone call. And it all happened within the last two months. All in the last two months. So it's, um, yeah, so it was long, long overdue as far as my family is concerned. <laughs> It, it only takes family to motivate you sometimes. It, <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. So, and it's also, it, there's a Kindle version as well. So yes. That, so, so the Kindle, the Kindle I published, I published the Kindle in 2021, oh. but um, the paperback just came out last week and oh. the audiobook is coming out in six weeks. Yes. Fantastic stuff. So, and also Thrive Global. This is an article on how to begin uh, letting go. Yes, I have a lot of articles. I have a blog that I, I write. I write about different things. Um, I love writing. And letting how to begin letting go is really the process of self-awareness. Like, see, I am the self-awareness do yen sha. I talk about self-awareness. That's something that I'm really passionate about. Because when we begin to understand our thoughts, when we begin to listen to our thoughts, to how we speak to ourselves, the thoughts that are causing fear, the thoughts that are causing doubts, causing love, causing us to connect in different ways. And I have a lot of templates and exercises which I share with my clients to help them to discover this. To discover the thoughts because it's not always easy to pick up on these thoughts. We have over 90,000 thoughts going through our heads every day. How do I pick up on the thoughts that really cause me disservice or no longer serve me? So let, let how to let go is really beginning to be aware of the thoughts you want to let go of. That's the first thing. And then understanding the feelings that are coming about from these thoughts. There's so many things that we think our feelings just arrive out of the blue. Each feeling is connected to a thought. First, it starts with a you know a thought. We 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 are conditioned by the media. We are conditioned by family. From childbirth, we are conditioned. We have over a gazillion thoughts in our heads that and beliefs that we now need to just kind of sift through, 
Is this causing me to make progress in where I want to go? Or is this causing me to really be stuck where I am now? And it's about really beginning to understand what is of value to me now? What themes in my life do I want to hold on to? What themes do I want to let go of? And then using different modalities. Energy healing is a modality. That is, I feel energy healing is almost um, effortless. Mm. Because infinite intelligence, you're connecting to it more and more and becoming more familiar to it. Because it's allowing you to really become familiar as you are healed, as the as the practitioner sends you Reiki, sends you energy healing, you are becoming much more familiar with that energy. And it's activating your own energy meridians within you. And you're becoming much more familiar with that infinite intelligence, that 3.5 trillion volts within us. This is not something that is, um, it is real, the volts, the energy is within us. So as we begin to use different modalities, whether it's energy healing, whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy, whether it's meditation, whether it's EFT or whatever medi whatever modality we want to use, we can begin to understand the thoughts and use the modality to let go of them. But it starts with self-awareness. And there's a lot more I've written. I always write a little over, you know, this is just a summary. <laughs> Wonderful, though. But I will put a link to your blog there as well. Because people don't, I don't believe people realize your, the, your words, people's words, carry energy. Every single thing that we have carries an energy. You pick up a piece of paper, it has energy. So when they read your blog, your words, that's a transmutation. That's a, an exchange as well yes. of the energy. And okay. when they read this, it can be very healing for people as well. So, and I'm so glad you're talking about this because so much, I believe, disease, dis-ease, yes. so much anxiety, so much stress, so much mental health, mental illness, I believe is spiritual and it's energetic. So I say all this to ask you about the work you do. If somebody came to you for a session, what can they expect? Thank you, Sha. I'm I feel I'm with family. I just feel that we are I'm resonating with everything you're saying. <laughs> because you can move countries. But you're still the same person. The grass may look greener on the other side, but when you move to that other side, it's still you. <laughs> you cannot run from you. You can. There was an old <laughs> song, Teddy Pendergrass, you can't hide from yourself everywhere you go. You are. As simple yeah. as that. <laughs> yeah. It really starts with us. Um, yes, thank you. My, a session with me, I do have um, a one hour session usually. And I also have the eight week program. So depending on what people want, um, I do have the one hour healing sessions, which is just the energy practice and the um, light language, because sometimes people want to um, connect with past you know, people who have passed, their relatives who have passed, or they want to understand what their soul profile is, soul profile is, because I'm also an Akashic record reader. So that sometimes takes three one hour sessions to get through. So those are the energy healing is kind of this, you know, the kind of quick, you know, and, and, and I have clients who have been coming to me for like two, three years who come for every two, three months, you know, and have energy healing in that way. The Smith Emotional Mastery Program is an eight-week program, which really is about recovery. It's about going from self-awareness into mindfulness and really showing, because it's something to read about, for me to talk about. It's another thing for me to support my clients within the sessions, you know, over the eight hours and using the templates and the exercises I have a number of courses within that Smith Emotional Mastery Program, which my clients go through over the eight weeks. And it's really about journeying into a place of calm. 
So you start out with self-awareness, then you move into mindfulness, which is really about cognitive behavior therapy and being, becoming aware of your thoughts. And then you move into integration, which is holding that polarity, you know, knowing that, yes, I can, I'm becoming aware of all these different thoughts in my head and I'm comfortable with it. I'm at ease. I'm okay to feel fearful and to feel love. I'm okay to feel faith and to feel um, a little bit of fear still, a little bit of doubt. Um, it's okay. It's okay. So coming to that place where we're able to hold, hold those polarity of emotions, that is emotional intelligence. Being able to hold the polarity of emotions and thoughts and knowing that it's still okay. And then it's about trauma care learning over those eight weeks about, you know, what parts of me are feeling, you know, still traumatized, self-care, you know, if it's hydration, body care, self-care is real because we have to begin to parent ourselves in the way that we should have been parented. Sometimes we forget that there are parts of us that are stuck in childhood and we have to begin to parent those parts of us all over again. So self-care is ongoing. And sometimes we have to practice and be encouraged and be held to accountability in these sessions. And then there's the transmutation, which is the energy healing, which my clients get to continue to align and become very familiar with that infinite intelligence. And that takes place over eight weeks. And I'm putting together a, a membership that will involve me doing videos of the SMEAT program. And that's something I'm going to do in 2024. <laughs> that's very good. But that's very comprehensive. And I do like what you're talking about because I think the traditional ways like CBT or going to you know therapy and all that, all that's good. But I some people need things to do. So I like that you have structure to your program, especially the eight week one where they have to look at things and, you know, fill out things. And, you know, some people need oh, yeah. things to do. And reflect. There yeah. we go. And reflect. Because psychotherapy is reflect. mostly about the exchange and it's very powerful, very powerful, the exchange between the, the, the therapist and the client. And a lot happens in that 50 minute session. Um, but sometimes you have to go away and do other things, oh, yes. you know, as well. So I I always encourage everyone to do other things, to read something, to meditate, to meditation is not for everyone. So maybe take a walk, whatever it is. So what you offer is a, a different take on things. And it's an expansion. It sounds like it's intricate. But it also expands to the energy levels. Because we are spiritual beings. We are energy beings. Like you, I totally agree with you 100%. What does awakening and the concept of non-duality, because we talk about polar, but what does awakening and the concept of non-duality mean? Yes, that's great. That's a wonderful question. Um, awakening for, for me is um, really coming to realize the about the infinite intelligence, coming to, um, to know. You, we may read about it, but coming to really experience that higher self, that infinite intelligence, and knowing that it is different from the physical ego self that we have been conditioned to believe is who we are. There's a moment that that happens for everyone. Not everybody becomes spiritually awakened in this in their lifetime, in, in, in a lifetime. It may take several lifetimes to be spiritually awakened. But that point, when you realize that, when you sense, when you experience that self, that true self, there is no going back. You cannot deny its presence anymore. That is spiritual awakening. That is an awakening moment. But there is still a lot of work, I would call it, a lot of experience, a lot of practice that one needs to do after that moment. Because you can be aware of that 
higher self, but still be stuck in your head or your heart or your gut in that physical duality, in, in that physical experience of the of the matrix, which is which is that ego self, not knowing that you can be in this world but not part of it. You know, you can actually be in your body as an avatar, but you are able to step and align with that infinite intelligence and draw attraction and attract your experiences, your preferred experiences to you. But we are always in non-duality. It, it is, it doesn't, as long as we're alive, <laughs> we are living in non-duality. But we can operate in non, in in this. We are living in duality. I meant to say, as long as we're alive. But we can be aware of the different parts of us, that higher self and the physical self, and we can operate more as the higher self. We can be driven more as that infinite being and that is when we really come to i believe live in non-duality because we, we realize that we are actually both the higher self and the physical self because the spirit self needs the higher self to do things you see we still need i have i'm a mother I have two sons i've got i've got my businesses i've got my energy healing i've got all those things i need to do the higher self needs to operate in this experience with a purpose there's a purpose that that higher self wants to achieve in each lifetime and it's about understanding the um the experience and the flavor of the higher self after awakening, to live in non-duality as a whole being. Mm. And that's how I see awakening and non-duality. Yeah, no, that's helpful because when we look at non-duality, I suppose people can get confused. They think, well, no, I'm only my higher self when I get there. I'm only my, I can't be both. And actually, there can be a, a bit we of both. Yeah, yeah, we're still, we're still, a work in progress we still yes. working towards it and I liked what you said earlier about the fact that not everybody will be a be on a spiritual journey as such you yeah. know everybody's not going to awaken to what we may call a spiritual being because it's it's like a relief you know those really those people who annoy you those relatives who never change <laughs> the, you know the, the name you all have the, them <laughs> whatever it is out there you know we we can now think and say okay maybe they're not maybe this just isn't there yeah. yeah and it's okay and it's fine this is yeah. why we all exist and can coexist um but this is the, my one gripe with the spiritual world i find a lot of people sort of go through I'm I'm choosing my words carefully because I'm a part of the spiritual world you know but um people go on spiritual journeys and sometimes I find that they want to be above or they see themselves above other people or that they've ascended to a state that's above and beyond and it isn't you know just because somebody's struggling and isn't spiritual doesn't mean they're below you and I, I often see that in workshops and this competition and all sorts of things. And I always have a precursor to say this is not a, this is not a competitive environment. Mm -hmm. Everybody is where they are as they are right now. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and in this room, in this workshop, we're all equal kind of thing. Yeah. So True. that people are OK. It kind of shrinks the ego a little bit so that they can open up um to receive and uh, when we look at love and because that's a lot of your work what you help people with i believe i'm interpreting that it, for me it sounds like you're saying let's get back to love love of self does yeah. that is oh, that, yes. I got that oh, right yes. oh yes oh yes and i do agree with you we're all on our lane we're all on the one lane and i also believe that we are the only ones in our universe we are created, everything around us is a projection. 
Everybody around me is a projection of what is within me. The family I have, the friends I have, and I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, or even yesterday, or even an hour ago when we started this program. <laughs> there is enough to contend with in my own universe. <laughs> I really cannot take on much more than that. <laughs> Exactly. That that's so one-dimensional to be like that. And we're not one-dimensional. We're multidimensional, aren't we? Yes. Yes. And um so so yes, I am all about going back to love because this there is such a determination to separate us from that. That is what dissociation is. Mm -hmm. We are separated from love. And the way to our true self is to go back to love yeah. is to desire it for yeah. it not to become a dirty word <laughs> because love could become you know for some people love can sometimes be a dirty word like oh no this is if you want to be successful if you want to be you know in this competitive universe nobody does business with the person they don't trust if you have two business people offering the same product you will, I will go to the one that is offering it to me with love. Someone I can trust. So even in my business, I have become much more successful because I am aligning with that frequency of love. We're not, you know, we're not crazy. People may act crazy, but they're not. <laughs> exactly. But that's another point as well, just quickly about... Um, the fact that you are a channel and you've got the Reiki, you're, you're sensitive as well. You're, you're what I would call a sensitive, you know, you, you pick up. Yes. Oh, yes. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, does it? That doesn't mean we get everything that we can see everything. And yes. even if we do see it, we might still just do it because we're not our mistakes. There we go. We are not our mistakes. You know, we make them, we may happen, but that's not who we truly are. It's because we are, we, you know, we are experimenting in different ways. And it's a, it's a trial and error. Life, life, this entire life is an experiment for goodness sake, you know? And I have come to see it that way. And I have come to understand that whatever happens, if it doesn't go the way I planned, it's because I'm meant to learn something from it and it was only a stepping stone. But no experience is wasted. That is something I'm learning, that no experience is wasted. If I miss my way on, on, you know, on, on a journey, if I'm traveling somewhere and I miss my way or I'm late, the perspective with which I continue to take that journey matters to what I continue to manifest. So it's important to hold that perspective. We can go A or we can go Z. We are so powerful and nothing is wasted. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing is wasted. So on, um, mistakes happen, but it's not about my true self. Yeah. It's about the experiment. And how many times do researchers and scientists do, you know, carry out experiments before they finally hit the jackpot? That's their whole work, is to experiment. That's yes. why that is. Mm. The perspective that we hold as we carry on with our day-to-day, -day, whether it's it's me giving my son something and, then, something and then saying to myself, I wish I hadn't given him that. Actually, that was what was needed. We are doing what really matters. And the beliefs we hold, the beliefs we hold are so powerful. We are so powerful as beings that... Um, when we come to touch base with that and we increase our self-awareness and we really become mindful, we begin to feel better about holding different aspects. Yes, I may be fearful, I may be doubtful, I may have low self-worth, but there is a part of me that is fearless. There is a part of me that is loving, that has confidence. There is a part of me that is feels very connected to love, is love. And being able to get closer to that frequency within us and feel comfortable holding both, 
you know, because, you know, just this morning, I I was feel, fearful because my son, who is in Spain at the moment, is gone to Spain with his girlfriend, hasn't contacted me in three days. And I was saying to myself, hmm, I wonder what's going on with him. But then I sent him a message and he doesn't normally like me to contact him when he's away like that. But I, because he's 26 now, and he's like, mom, I'm a big man. <laughs> So I decided, no, I'm going to send him a message. And just and the message was, hope you're having a good time, you know. And the, the old me would have sent a message, why haven't you contacted me? You know, you should contact me. But the, but the perspective that there is good, even if he hasn't contacted me, even if, even if there is still good, even if I feel this, there is still this. And that polarity is what I take my clients through in the group, you know, over the eight weeks, just to hold that polarity, to begin to get really comfortable with the different feelings and the thoughts and the sensations that we have within us, because they will always be, they will always be there. The different sensations would always be there. It's all about alignment. And then letting infinite intelligence support us through that. That's so good. So, so good. And um, Soul Space Healing is your website. So I will put a link there. And a lot of what you've been speaking about will be on that website. But tell us why you support Scope. Scope is a charity in the UK. Um, what, what does Scope mean to you? Scope is a charity for persons with disabilities and my first son who is now 27 has complex health needs and he's um, he is registered as a disabled man and he is now a trainee sous chef. He's a trainee sous chef, cannot read or write um, with severe learning difficulties but he has really shown me, he has shown me that we can become unstoppable with the right support, with the right perspective. And I love what SCOPE does, providing support for families with difficulties and vulnerable persons. So yes, they're one of the charities that I support. It's because of my son. <laughs> that is wonderful because of course, charity leads us into our spiritual life as well. Um, oh, so yes. People, even if it's just mentioning them, um, it can touch someone who can look into it as well. I've always been doing charity. I've I've gone to countries, rural con communities, helping children with disabilities. I've recently, uh, honestly, I could go on about charities. I, <laughs> I've supported different charities, but it's now I just I do it, you know, with resources. But I used to do it physically, supporting shelters, supporting a lot of different charities, giving out blankets and, you know, in the streets in the cold. Um, so I've I've always from my twenties, but now I'm so busy. I I only give my resources, but it's it's not it's something that I know makes me feel fulfilled. Well, Bola, thank you so much. This has been absolutely enlightening. I know that our mm -hmm. listeners will find it enlightening as well. And if anybody wants to contact Bola, her links will be in the show notes. Go and say hello to her on social media as well. Anything? Actually, yes, yes, I actually want to say that if those who want to subscribe to me, to my to my website, I'm giving out a free um, um, self-worth intervention psychological course. It's a three module course that takes you, you from, um, you know, anxiety to calm. And it's really about self-awareness. And I have a number of exercises as a meditation practice in there as well. And it's, you know, I, it's normally, I normally sell it, you know, but I thought, let me use this as, um, as a, you know, as, as a gift to those who subscribe to, to my website. So that's on, that's, that's right on, on my homepage. But I know the work you're doing, you're obviously doing your life's work. It comes across in everything you say <laughs> and all the work that you're doing. So thank you for all of your work, your beautiful work you're doing. Um, and long may it continue. And thank, thank you, Cheryl. On the show. Thank you, Shah. You are doing wonderful work as well. I love, I love your energy. I love your show. You are amazing, and thank you for having me. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Nine Peaches Therapy's self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by helping you to achieve confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. Created by an expert practitioner to help you to achieve the best result. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day using the most gentle and effective guided meditations to rid yourself of anxiety, stress, fear, and negative thinking. Available now on Spotify, Apple Music, and other platforms. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.